being recorded from now onward. Yes. So binomial distribution is that there are two names. So there are two possible outcomes that can come up. <laughs> and you are trying to see that out of many tastes, how many times a success is happening. For example, let's say I am telling you in general, in my class, 80% students uh, pass the exam. What is the probability that out of 30 students in this class, or let's out of 10, 10 students in this class, exactly seven will pass. So I have 10 students in this class and I'm asking what is the probability that exactly seven will pass? Well, in general, 80% students pass. This kind of a question we're trying to answer. So let's say these are the 10 students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, what is this? Probability is that this person will pass. First person. Can you tell me? 80%. 80%. 0.8. <clears throat> Let's say I decide this person passes, this person passes, he also passes, this person passes. I do think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. <clears throat> so then this person's first in probability is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And this person's first in probability is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. Now, assuming that they are not cheating, they are not looking at each other's this thing. What is the probability that the you will you will see this particular result pass fail pass pass fail pass again fail pass 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 something like that these are all independent events so we just now told that p of a intersection b when a and b are inter independent that is p a into p b <clears throat> so because these guys are giving exams <coughs> which are independent to each other then the probability of this particular <coughs> combination happening is 0 0.8 to the power 7 into 0 0.2 to the power 3. Are you with me? The probability of this happening is this. Are you okay? You have to respond. It's a online class. I yeah. cannot see your faces. Yes. So if that is the case, question is that how am I creating this particular combination? The combination could have been also like all the first seven person, seven persons pass and the last three person faces <clears throat> or the last three person uh, or the first three person fails or the, and the last seven person passes. Or it can be alternately pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. Why are you, am I making sure that this is the combination? There are many possible combinations are possible. So how many different combinations are possible then? How many different ways out of 10 persons, seven will pass and three will fail? Anybody? If there are 10 persons in the class, 10 students in the class, <clears throat> how many different ways exactly seven will pass out of those 10? One, two, three. 
Come again. One twenty, sir. How do you, uh, how are you getting that value? Uh, sir, ten T uh, ten C seven. Ten C seven. Yes. The value is ten C seven. <clears throat> so, if I try to write this in normal mathematical values, what I'm trying to say is that when generic when when probability of something happening probability of success is p out of m number of tests or sorry out of n number of tests there will be m success the probability of that We call it probability of <clears throat> m given n and p is ten c seven. So n c m, then point eight to the power <coughs> seven, and then one minus p, which is point two to the power ten minus seven. So that's the formula. This formula we again will not. <coughs> We may not uh, remember. We can derive it from this kind of a maths. <clears throat> now, this is a probability distribution. Why? Because what are the possible values? What is stochastic here? In in these three parameters, out of m, n, and p, which value is not fixed? Can you tell me? <clears throat> Which value is stochastic, which is not fixed before yes, we start? Yes. Now, P is the probability. P is something that I told in the very first line that in general, my class has 80%. So this is fixed. This is not changing. Sir, M. The M is changing. M can change. What are the possible values of M? What is the minimum possible value of M? Zero. Zero and what is the maximum possible value of m? Huh? What is the maximum possible value of m? Ten. Ten. Sir. Ten. So in this case, small n. So for all such values, I am getting a probability. So m is equal to zero. You put the formula up to m is equal to n. You put the formula. You will get the probability of m given n b. That values are given, and if you add them up, it can be shown that it adds up to one. So what is this? It is n c zero p to the power zero one minus p to the power m. That is the first one, right? <clears throat> Plus n c one p to the power one one minus p to the power m minus one. Plus Sorry, in uh, <clears throat> zero to the power n. Sorry, this n. Then n c two p to the power two one minus p to the power n minus two. This is when it is two. Then <clears throat> n c three p to the power three one minus p to the power n minus three, and so on up to which point n c n p to the power n one minus p to the power zero. If you add this up, it becomes. If you have studied series in class ten, you will know this is p plus one minus p to the power n. That series I am breaking it like that. If I break it, this series comes up. And if I add this up, this means p plus one minus p means one to the power n, which is one. So these probability values adds up to one. So that's why it's a probability distribution. And because it's a probability distribution, I can have probability of each value. So you can also ask me. That's why. That what is the expected number of people passing? So ten guys are giving exam. What is the expected number of people? How will I do that? The expected number of passing. Expectation of x is <clears throat> x into probability of x summation of that. 
So what is expected number? Zero into probability. Okay. So probability of zero, then probability of one plus probability of two plus probability of three up to this dot 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 n into p of n. So we can write it like this way, summation of m, then n c m p to the power m one minus p to the power n minus m. If somebody derives it a little bit, like I did for before, it comes to be n into p. It's a simple formula, that's how it breaks it up. So this particular formula is basically the mean <laughs> yes. x also. Sorry for that. So it's, this is binomial distribution where the mean of the random variable, what is the random variable? Number of person passing out of 10 persons. That is a random variable and it adds up to one. Sorry, it adds up to NP. So that's how we can calculate this thing. And it, it has also been calculated the same way you can calculate the variance of X is N into P into one minus P. I'm not going into the derivation, but in the same way that I wrote here, it can, this can also be derived like this. Binomial distribution, what do we use? In many problems, there are this kind of cases comes up that there are two categories, one and zero. For example, let's say if I talk about, I have a 10 lakhs rupees budget in my hand. In that 10 lakhs rupees budget, I can give 10 1 lakh rupees loan to various people. And I am a bank manager, basically the credit manager in a bank who passes the loan and not passes the loan, something like that. Now the bank is saying that out of those 10 loans, if more than nine people, uh, sorry, if, if less than nine people return the money or at least more than one people default, then your job will go. <clears throat> So you do your job properly. If your performance is such that more than one people out of those 10 people whom you are giving loan defaults, then your job will go. <clears throat> now my question comes up is that at what probability value, if the P is how much based on which I will decide that whether I will give a loan or not. So it is saying that the probability that your job will go is basically 10 C1, <clears throat> P to the power one, one minus P to the power nine, and more than one person uh, living. Basically, I would say P to the power I and 10 minus I from I is equal to one to 10 or two to 10, more than one person. So this is the probability that I will be calculating. This will be a some function of P at the end of the day, if I do not know the value of P, this will be the sum function of P. So I will not give loan in that particular place if this FP is, <coughs> FP is higher than certain cutoff value that is the risk proportion that I have in my mind. I will not give loan to anybody. And I will happily give loan if this particular value is lower than the cutoff that I have in the mind. So based on this particular decision, certain segments, the banks don't give loan and certain segments, the bank give loan. Now it all depends on this P value. And this P value is the probability of default. This will come from predictive analytics. We'll do that when we do logistic regressions and etc. This P values estimate that whether somebody will default or not will come from this predictive analytics. But then you have to put that in this kind of a mathematics to decide that whether you will give loan to this person or if you give loan at what interest rate. 
if you remember based on your credit rating interest rate changes question is <clears throat> why will your interest rate change below 750 below 800 uh, the credit rating they change your interest rate that's what happens in bank right they increase your interest rate. They charge a higher interest rate when you take a loan. My question is that how are these two related? Can you tell me that how will I relate the interest rate that I'm charging to you with your default rate? How will I calculate that? How will I calculate what is the interest rate that I should charge you? Generally, it will be uh, your cost of capital, uh, basically, uh, plus the amount that you want to make and plus what is the uh, credit cost. So basically, default, <coughs> general default in that specific group of customer. So that will be the final interest rate. So, so can you, can, Sandeep, can you tell me once more? So cost of capital, uh, credit cost, and your whatever uh, you want to finally make. So basically, uh, you, you might also include uh, the, the application processing cost and all those things, but that will be very small. But uh, cost of capital being the in the capital that you are taking from market. So if you are taking it at four percent, say for example, savings account. So four percent is your cost of capital. Then your credit cost being the percentage of default in that specific group. Say for example, if it's like two percent or three percent of the population don't pay up, so that is your uh, uh, what you call. Uh, credit cost and on top of that how much do you want to earn so if you want to no, so <clears throat> very good so the this credit cost this exactly two percent and three percent how do you get this value is it is it exactly the number of persons who will not return the money uh, so generally uh, the credit cost would be your uh, total 90 plus so basically if we have uh, a group of people that we have lent to and uh, currently the 90 plus is sitting somewhere Two, three, four percent. So that generally becomes a paid cost for that uh, specific group of customers. <clears throat> okay, so it is ninety plus two percent or ninety plus three percent, something like that. Yes, ninety per ninety. So basically, people who have defaulted uh, and not paid for last three years, so ninety ninety days default. So okay. that is generally considered as the that exact entry. that value is taken. Exact that value means ninety days default. How many people have done ninety days default? That percentage is taken directly. I'm uh, just asking. I'm not sure. Ha, so on an average, that will be your uh, ballpark figure. But you can always uh, calculate the probability of default uh, for a. So basically, if you are calculating ECL, what you will do is you will take for the last thirty specific months how, what was the population that you had, and after twelve months, how many of them mm -hmm. actually defaulted. So and then average it out for the last thirty days. So you will get a probability of default that on this portfolio you generally see a three percent population or four percent population. Uh, going into 90 plus so 90 plus is what we are losing it's a loss for the bank so that has to be uh, factored in into the pricing okay fair enough so i will try to just do this maths a little bit different way let's say it's the same thing that he told that uh, there was a credit cost and there's a capital cost capital cost and credit cost is something that you that that you don't don't bother you just think about that if i have given 100 rupees loan I want to make, if I, if I do not make 108 rupees, I will face a loss. Why I will face a loss? Because this 100 rupees loan that I'm giving to this person has to be obtained from somewhere. No. So that is the capital cost. In this case, he was sent it was taking for 4%. That means from RBI or somebody else, when they are taking the money, they have to pay that 4%. Plus, there will be certain processing fees, like background check and blah, 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 that you're doing for this person. So that will be some 1%, 2%, let's say, or 0.5% or something like that. So that will be that 4% or 2%, that is the exact amount that you, that, that is the minimum amount that you want to earn. So let's say the minimum amount that you want to earn after doing this thing is coming as 8% in this particular case for a particular kind of loan. So 108 rupees, is the minimum below that you will do a loss 108 rupees is the profit that you want to earn now if your p the probability of default is 0 0.02 two percent people defaults then what is your expected profit so expected profit 
is basically 0 0.98 into 0.98 into this 108 plus 0 0.02 into basically you you lose the whole money so you lose 100 rupees so 0 0.108 minus 100 so here i would say the expected profit is this <clears throat> so then you decide that whether this this is a worth going or not so 0.98 into let's say x plus 0 0.02 let's let's say this 8 i have not decided yet minus 100 that means minus 2 and 0.98 into x now i will not even go in this market unless this expected profit is greater than 0 so 0.98 into x minus 2 has to be greater than 0 so x has to be greater than equal to the minimum value of x is 2 by 0.98 whatever value i get that should be the interest rate that i charge in this particular ma mathematics that i am doing there is a minimum interest rate in the percentage term you can say <clears throat> whatever three percent four percent that should be the top up that i will i will charge then only i will not make a loss so out of one zero instead of one zero eight what i will make is let's say uh, an additional let's say two percent top up or in this case two by 0.98 is coming around three percent let's say 2.5 or something like that i do not know over and above this eight rupees i will charge that point two point three three percent or whatever percent that i'm getting so it's basically opposite it's not it's not uh the percentage of people and the percentage of uh, amount that you charge are same the maths are done in this way so this is the extra income tax or extra interest that you will be charging now <clears throat> what is the credit rating the credit rating that you that we get is basically talks about the probability the signal of the probability of whether you default or not or whether uh, there will be a 90 days default or not so the higher the credit rating the lower is the probability so from that credit rating they get this probability value which is this value they get this value and from that value they calculate uh, this particular value and this is the extra interest rate that you have to pay because your credit rating is getting dropped. Now, <clears throat> where does the binomial equation comes in? This particular thing is a binomial equation. The moment if there are multiple people, let's say if there are 10, 15 people or hundreds of people of different credit ratings, then you have to have different probability values for different people you have to follow a probability function. So if I have, let's say I am a person, this is in a, uh, this calculation that I'm just showing you is in the uh, uh, population space. Now let's say I'm a bank and I get around, let's say uh, 10,000 applications every year. And out of those 10,000 applications, the probability of defaulting is some, some X amount. I have to decide how many applications I will pass and how many applications I will stop. More or less within a particular, uh, uh, within a particular, uh, I would say, uh, default range also. So that decision I have to take using this particular formula. What, I, what I'm doing, I'm saying 10 CI, P to the power I, into 1 minus P to the 10 minus I, where P is the, probability of defaulting so net calculation whatever i'm getting is the total probability of default the expected probability of default and that probability has to be higher than a cut of value that i decide based on that how many loans i will give will i give 10 loans and five loans or no loans at all in a particular segment i will decide that so there are segments where no loans are given so <clears throat> now if if the if your uh, uh, credit rating is below 500 or something like that, you will get no loan from anybody. So how do I decide that? How do I decide that cutoff below which I will not give any loan 
to anybody will come to this kind of a calculation. So that is where the binomial distribution is used. I will go ahead and I will talk about the next kind of distribution, which is Poisson distribution. <clears throat> Poisson distribution is generally used for its so here, if you remember in binomial distribution, it was a discrete distribution where the value m, this is my, this was my random variable, the number of persons, number of success out of a test. And it's discrete because it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, some discrete values can be taken. It cannot take 1.25. 1.36, 2.49, these kind of values are not possible. <clears throat> but this is a finite distribution. It starts from zero, ends at capital N, a small n. So if you have done n number of tests or 10 students have given exams, then that is where it gets fixed. However, for Poisson distribution, that does not happen. In case of Poisson distribution, it is used for count variables. So it is used for count variables. For example, let's say if I say that in an average, <coughs> such in score per test match is, let's say 47.88. Let's assume. <coughs> I ask you, what is the probability that Sachin scores <coughs> exactly uh, 52 in the next test match. It's if I ask you this question. So the formula for that is that probability of x is going to small x given that the lambda, given this lambda is <coughs> e to the power minus lambda, lambda to the power x by x factorial. So in this particular case, probability of capital X is going to 50 given 47.88 will follow that formula. Now, all of these things we will not do in our hand, the computer will do it. Now, <coughs> question is that Exact 50 is not something that people will ask. People will rather ask that uh, range. So what is the probability that Sachin will do a century? Or Sachin will do a half century? So pro probability that Sachin will do a half century is basically like this. Now, the upper limit is infinite. You cannot keep on calculating 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, up to, theoretically it is infinite. So if somebody keeps on doing no balls and Sachin keeps on hitting sixes on those no balls, then it will be infinite score, right? So then how will I calculate it? I will rather calculate it in this way. One minus probability of X smaller than 50 or one minus probability of X smaller than equal to 49. So I will calculate probability up to from 0 to probability up to 49. And that is what I will add it up. So that there are again software which can be done. But even if you do it in hand, this is something that you can do. The previous one, which is x greater than equal to 50. So if you start calculating from 50 and go on up to infinite, that is not something that you will converge. You will not be able to complete that calculation. <clears throat> it has been seen that the mean value and the standard deviation value is same, which is lambda. So this is what this is how we generally test that whether it is a point of distribution or not. Later point of time, we will learn that how tomorrow, in fact, in the next class, we'll learn how to check whether one variable follows a certain distribution or not. But <clears throat> these are the two distributions that are very common in the context of discrete distributions. One is Poisson and one is binomial. Binomial is used when one zero kind of data is there and Poisson is used when count data is there. So we'll <coughs> quickly do some 
maths on it on 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 our own just one minute let me share the screen Just for a minute. Can you read the problem and tell me what will be the answer? The first question, please read. So first you tell me what is the distribution that we are dealing with here? <clears throat> yeah, Suja. Yes, it's a binomial distribution. I'm asking you the probability of <clears throat> likelihood of five will be broken. So five will be broken. What what is the M? What is the N and what is the P? Can you tell me for the first question? N is 20, M is 5. Probability is 8%, 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Anybody want to say something else? N is 20, sure, right? Anybody want to say something else? Okay, fair enough. So that's correct. This is basically a meaningless, <clears throat> this is a population's information. This has nothing to do with the problem. And what is the likelihood that all will work? Quickly tell me, MNP. <clears throat> 20, 20. So, <clears throat> but probability will be, uh, yeah, all will work. The so probability will turn into uh, 92%, 0.92. And if I write it in the terms of 0 0.08, then what? Zero. Zero. All work, all will work mean nothing is broken. So 0, 20 and 0 0.08. Similarly, all will broken means 20, 20 and 0 0.08. You can put that in the formula. <clears throat> Fair enough. Anybody has a doubt? I'm pretty sure many of you has a doubt. Please raise your hand, those who have the doubt. Unless you raise your hand, I will not know that you have a problem and I will not cater to that problem. So please raise your hand if you have a, if you have a doubt on this question. Sure, no problem. <clears throat> okay, so Anindita, are you there? Yes, sir. Anjita, try to solve the next problem. Question number two. <clears throat> Tell me what distribution it is.
So I think uh, M will be seven, and so, N will be ten. So it is binomial distribution. Yes, sir. Why are you saying it is binomial distribution? How are you sure? How are you getting sure? You are counting seven or more members, fifty or more runs. It can very well be poison, right? Why do you think it is binomial? Anybody else who wants to say why it is binomial? Including Anandita, if you have an answer, you can tell. First, there are only two possibilities. Either, person, either member will be present or absent. <clears throat> So oh, that is that that possibility is always there means okay so so let's say okay so i will i will keep this thing in mind preeti and i will show you that this possibility is not the one <clears throat> only that we will deal with. Uh, if I have to attempt, uh, yes, yes, God of telling. It is a poise, uh, poison distribution because the question says, what is the probability that seven or more members will be present on a given day? So it's not fixed uh, seven. So, <clears throat> the, so, the that, upper... so that is that that can that can also happen in other questions also for example you could have asked the previous previous thing in the laptop case yes. but what is the likelihood that more than five will be broken will it will it be poison distribution in fast problems case in that case if i ask what is the likelihood that more than five will be broken <clears throat> how will you solve that problem if i ask you that code of Let's say here I asked more than five will be broken. How to answer this, everybody? Summation karna padega. That means what will be the value of M? M would range from um, more than five, so it would be six to twenty. X to 20. Yes. Fair enough. Good. So, either we to 7 or more. 7 or more matlab 7 se kitna kaha tak? Up to what? 10. Up to 10. So, there is not no difference between 2 and 1. Uh -huh. Question number 2 and question number 1. Why are you saying it is poison? Both are binomial. And the way to define binomial is that this up to 10, there is an upper limit. It is a finite discrete distribution. <clears throat> there is an upper limit there. So it's binomial. Binomial means M, N, and P is there. And I already told 7 or more means 7 to 10. And then N is how many? 10. P is what? What is the probability of being present? which is 0.9 and I can calculate it accordingly. <clears throat> Fair enough. Can you answer the third question? If you understood this one. So will it be 
Which one? First one? Yes, sir. How are you saying nine? What is your uh, way of? So as the probability is 0. 0.65 and uh, the number of patients taken uh, is 15. So. So? Uh, so finding out it will be nine approximately. Why? Why? So because the effective, uh, effective percent is 65. So probability of success is 6.65. P is yes. 0. 0.65. And uh, we have uh, 15 patients participating. So number of patients on whom it will be affected will be 0.65% of 15. Yes, 0.65% not 40. So effectively almost 9. It can also be written by this expected number, which is in a binomial regression, binomial case, it is N into P. N is 15 patients who are getting tested. P is the probability of success, which is 0.65. So N into P is 15 into 0.65 up to 9. It's fine. And then you try the second one. What is the probability that drug will be effective for less than half of them? <clears throat> How will I answer that? So, will it be like uh, less than half of the people participating, that is 7.5? So, if we take a probability of the half of the people, it will be 7.5 by 15 into the uh, into 0.6, that is the effective percentage. No, 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 no. See, this is, again, so... <clears throat> so, what I am asking you, I am asking you, out of, out of these 15 patients, out of these 15 patients, what is the probability that less than half will be, will be benefited from this drug? So how many tests I'm doing? What is my N? 15. 15. How many success am I expecting? What is stochastic success? Less than half of 15? Less than half, seven. Seven up to seven, not seven. Up to seven. So zero to seven, all these values. And the P is 0. 0.65. So I have to calculate the cumulative probability. That means all the probabilities, zero plus one plus two, all these probabilities, I will add them up. Cumulative probability up to seven. I will calculate and find out. Now, these okay, calculations sir. can be done with Python very easily. <clears throat> but, but before you use Python, you have to know what you are doing. Okay. I will ask now, uh, let's say, Shourab, Shourab Chitrakar. Sort of, can you try to answer question number four? Sort of, Chitokar, are you there? <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, yes. I... Then please, please try to try out on your own and try to answer question number four. <clears throat> First, identify what distribution it is.
Uh, I have doubts here. So, so <clears throat> what kind of doubt? Tell me. Tell me your doubt. Why you have a doubt? So, can it be binomial? No, I, I don't think so. It's a binomial problem. <clears throat> Why do you not think it's a binomial problem? Is there an upper limit? Is the what is what is the stochastic variable here? What is the random variable? What is the variable that can change? A number of people. Number of people arriving between 930 to 945. This is the number that can change. I think so. What is the maximum possible value of this number? That uh, uh, time interval into two. The time interval into two is the expected number. That is the average number. What is the maximum possible? In a particular day, all of a sudden, if there is huge rush, how many people can come in that 15 minutes? Theoretically. Uh, infinite. Can be infinite. If it is an infinite yeah. random variable, <clears throat> if it is an unbounded random variable, it has no bound, will it be binomial distribution? No. No. That's why it is Poisson. That is the exact reason Poisson. And somebody was telling, see, this 26% could have arrived and not arrived. Somebody was telling that yes, no, our problem will not go. So yes, no, it's in your mind actually. You can see this problem also <clears throat> by saying that okay, these 26 persons have two state in them. Either they arrived or not arrived. So I will treat that as binomial. But that's not the case because these 26 persons I'm counting and that count has an infinite possibility. The <clears throat> maximum number of that count is infinite. So we are not saying 26 persons out of 100 persons or out of some people, where the maximum possibility is that many people. We are not saying that. That's why it's a Poisson distribution. In the Poisson distribution, what are being asked here is being asked that what is the probability that 26 people will come when lambda is equal to two persons per minute? So for 15 minutes, it is 30. You calculate whatever is the value using the formula. <clears throat> what is the likelihood that a total number of patient arrivals between 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. is 50 less than 50? So I'm asking probability x is less than 50. But I can have here there are two hours, so 240 is my mean. Lambda is equal to 240. X is less than 50. So I have to calculate up to 49 so cumulative probability up to 49 i have to calculate that and do it in my this thing so that's the job that we will we are trying to do so now <clears throat> this particular uh, thing i will share with you guys what i'm going to do in the next class is we'll start by solving this problem quickly using Python. That is one line line code. So we'll quickly learn the codes of in Python. We'll also quickly learn in my class itself. In, we'll quickly learn how to create a summary of the data. And then we will go to normal distribution. We're not going into it today because of lack of time. We will go into next class, normal distribution, and then we'll go slowly towards Hypothesis testing. We are around half an hour lagging. In, in the speed that I would want it to go, half an hour to 45 minutes lagging. <clears throat> but don't worry, you do not, you should not try to rush. We will have extra classes. We will have certain uh, probably TA sessions extra where you can <clears throat> discuss all these things, but you take your time and learn this particular stuff. So whatever, what, what should you go and exercise in this week before you come back in the next week? 
first of all whatever uh, gorav has shown you the python coding you have to get your hands dirty so i will ask gorav to share the uh, the, the uh, python uh, notebooks with you so put those notebooks in my documents in some folder or whatever it should be made it is better if you make it in my documents <clears throat> so in that space you put that particular folder and then you create your uh, and you try out you you write you see the codes create your own python notebook write your code get your hands dirty i will also give a small uh, homework probably to do it in the uh, based on whatever gorav has uh, taught that part you practice for my part whatever lecture that i have given please try to listen one more time so we, i have taken not the yesterday session the today session is 2.5 hours this 2.5 hours i would strongly suggest please listen one more time so that you get your things handy you you <clears throat> you, you be in a position because data analytics where the python coding and etc are involved you will learn that over time you will not learn that in one go but this one you have to learn in the first go itself you have to understand so that you can come back and ask me the questions the python coding and stuff will take time to learn and you will learn it in some time but this one should be cleared as much as possible so please listen to the videos and come back in the next class we will i will see you in the next week if you have any question for today please let me know if you are too much there is too much information and do, do not have the questions right now keep it <laughs> in your notebook when you listen to the videos next time once more and then we will discuss that in the next week